What would you then ask yourself? You know the 2,000-year-old man that Mel Brooks played wasn't actually 2,000 years old. Really? He was still Mel Brooks. Oh, okay. It's not possible to be 2,000-year-old. He was kind of joking. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're looking at Richard Ayoade's all-time funniest moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Why is he in a banana? <laughs> Sorry, that's really confusing. <laughs> Number 20, Gun Control, The Last Leg. Richard, what's your opinion on this? Well, I've always been pro-gun, you know that. <laughs> when The Last Leg covers US politics and news, gun crime is a frequent topic of conversation. This was back in 2018, after the Parkland High School shooting, when Donald Trump suggested that arming absolutely everybody, namely teachers, was a solution to gun violence. So you just made that statement after watching Kindergarten Cop? Ayoade was on hand to show how absurd that idea is in the driest way possible, taking support of guns to its logical extreme like any good comedian. I mean, I think adding more guns into a situation is obviously the way to prevent shooting. <laughs> um, I think, in a way, if we take the guns away, the shootings may escalate. Like many Brits, Ayoade doesn't understand the necessity of any civilian owning a gun, or why it's so hard for America to understand that gun control does prevent gun crime. I'm literally arming everyone. Yeah. I yeah. think if you don't have a gun in your hand, well, well, let's not find out. <laughs> <laughs> Number 19, Dairy Girls, The Crystal Maze. And you're probably still imagining you might end up friends. <laughs> It's wonderful. It's wonderful to see that enthusiasm. Stars of Channel 4's hit comedy Derry Girls were in this episode of the Crystal Maze revival fronted by Ayoade, and none of them could keep a straight face as he delivered his one-liners. I'm sorry, Dylan. I'm sorry. It's bloody tough. I get used to it. But you don't sorry. know, do you? You calcify, you harden up, you try and protect yourself and you cry in your room. Like we all do. He immediately latched onto the rest of the Derry Girls, thinking Dylan Llewellyn was their weakest link, while Dylan was having the hardest time keeping it together of all of them. If you looked at him and went, I don't think you are a physical person. <laughs> I don't think you are. I'm just going to check just... that I don't want to select you. He also had plenty of derisive things to say about their tactics in the game, as Saoirse dropped keys on the floor and was ultimately trapped in the maze. But hats off to Dylan, he ended up breaking a crystal maze record. Make a turn, make a turn. Oh, this is brutal. Number 18, John Hamm, Travel Man. I've never been measured around that point before. Well, it's important. You don't want to cling. One of the most famous people to ever appear as one of Ayoade's traveling companions, perhaps bested only by Paul Rudd, John Hamm joined him on a mini break to Hong Kong. Sure you're happy? Are you I'm kidding? Not. Look at my face, it's beaming. They get off to a good start by getting fitted for tailored suits before moving on to trying some traditional tofu oh. that Hamm despises. But the highlight of the trip is them getting foot massages. While Hamm has a perfectly pleasant experience, Ayoade is in disarray. I'm very focused on the pain in my foot at the moment. It's clearing out all that bad energy. Is it? We know he hates to be touched, especially by strangers, oh. and he finds oh, wow. the foot massage excruciating, constantly wincing while Ham tries to share anecdotes about his childhood and rise to stardom. I, wow, that was really, ah, that's really painful. Number 17, Jason Statham, the big fat quiz of the year. Expendables. Is that your thing? It might be four, but I'm not sure. It could be three. <laughs> what? Not to say. He's a mainstay on Big Fat Quiz, and we'll be seeing a lot more of this later on. But this legendary moment came in the 2023 edition when he was teamed up with Mel Gidrich. Mel brought plenty of impersonations herself, producing a surprisingly good Donald Trump. For in for how, how like does it speak? Yep. For, for like this. Yep. Four indictments, boom. <laughs> but Ayoade, who's not really known for his impressions after the Tears for Fears incident in 2015's quiz, had a hilarious Jason Statham ready to go. Is this your room quiz? <laughs> Mate, this is how I speak when I'm at home. <laughs> 
This was because The Expendables was one of the answers, and the studio audience and Mo Gilligan loved every moment. He had a decent David Beckham too. He's in many ways even more nasal than me, which is an achievement, especially at that level. <laughs> Number 16, eggs. A league of their own. How many eggs were they getting through? Well, Jamie would know. Do you Do get football through a lot clubs of eggs? get through a lot of eggs? Yeah, a lot. From David Beckham to Jamie Redknapp, Ayoade was on the panel in this classic episode of A League of Their Own. They were matching football clubs with the cost-cutting measures they'd implemented, with one club getting some chickens so that it didn't have to buy as many eggs. Apparently, footballers get through a lot of them. The kit men weren't allowed to have milk. They had to pay for their own milk with a cup of tea. Sorry, the question was, do you get through a lot of eggs? <laughs> but Redknapp was unable to properly answer the question of whether he eats a lot of eggs, despite Ayoade spending minutes desperately trying to get to the bottom of it. Jamie, don't <laughs> turn on me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this isn't deliverance. <laughs> we need to make it out of this alive. OK? <laughs> right, what's the question? <laughs> eggs, Jamie! <laughs> At the end of it all, he reveals that eggs aren't even his preferred way of getting protein. I mean, I don't Please like do. eggs. <laughs> so you're... <laughs> Number 15, BAFTA's Monologue, 68th British Academy Television Awards. I, like many of you, need or feel the need for money. <laughs> uh, so here I am. For the third year in a row, Ayoade was hosting the BAFTA Television Awards. He treated it with the derision he thought it deserved, taking shots at the absurdity of the film and television industry awarding itself every year. And I'm here to reassure you that yes, this will eventually end. <laughs> I... His deeply awkward persona never fails to get laughs as he jokes in his opening monologue about how nobody has told him who any of the winners are because he isn't trustworthy. Uh, no one works harder than us, apart from people in other professions. <laughs> He also correctly predicted that he wouldn't be asked to host the BAFTAs for a fourth time, as the following year he was replaced by Rob Beckett and Ramesh Ranganathan. This is the last time I'll be hosting these awards. Please. <laughs> Unless for some reason they ask me back. Number 14, Ayawade on top, The Graham Norton Show. Give me, give me something um, in return. I mean, because what the other part of you is, well, look. That was not a good chat-up line. Um, <laughs> While promoting his second book, Ayawade on Ayawade, Richard appeared in a legendary interview with Krishnan Guru Murphy, in which he masterfully avoided answering any questions. But this interview on Graham Norton for his third book, Ayawade on Top, is perhaps even funnier. Literally, do I... you do not need to, if you've seen any film, you have seen this film. Oh, okay. <laughs> It is very similar to all films. <laughs> the book is a detailed analysis of the critically panned Gwyneth Paltrow vehicle, View from the Top, where Paltrow desperately tries to become an elite air hostess. You're, you're literally the opposite of on the edge oh, of I'm your sorry, seats. I'm sorry. You're so tired. <laughs> If this interview doesn't make you want to leave your life behind and become a stewardess like Gwyneth, we don't know what will. It's always fascinating to see Ayoade try to sell something. I, yes, I saw this film with um, my wife. That's not a joke, I chose <laughs> to marry me. That is not, that is possible that someone would choose that. Number 13, Tiny House Tour, Gadget Man. Welcome to the crib. It's modestly sized, let's say that. Richard takes Jimmy Carr with him to explore this tiny house he set up in the middle of London, as they get to grips with all the quirks this bizarre living space has to offer. Don't be glib. Sit down. OK? Sit down. What? Well, well, Sit where? down well, maybe I'll in take... the living room. Jimmy's got a lot of questions, though, mostly about the house's modular setup which requires you to spin handles to move the walls around and open the kitchen and bathroom areas. He believes that the house is potentially hazardous, and Richard proves him wrong by escaping being crushed to death in the shower. OK, do it. Yeah? Keep going. Yeah? Yeah? Richard, you in there? Yeah. If it hurts, tell me. I'm in the shower, fool. So the safety mechanism on this house is hide in the shower? That's always the safety mechanism. And in the years since, tiny houses have really Ooh. taken off. 
This gadget was way ahead of its time. Number 12, Brain <laughs> Travel Man. Here we go. Good night. Wow. More Travel Man. Iowades tasted far worse things than stinky tofu on the show. It's perhaps even more telling when he refuses to eat something, which happened when he took Stephen Mangan along with him to Marrakesh. Mangan ordered an entire sheep's head among other things, while Iowade steered well clear. Let me know how that is. Bon appetit. That face tells me you made the wrong decision. Stephen's brave, trying some brain and even an eyeball, though he obviously didn't enjoy his meal and kept trying to persuade Richard to join him in his torment. When the man who's eaten rotten shark and a sandwich made of cow's stomach wouldn't even go near something, you know it must have been absolutely revolting in person. Both those things are awful. Those are two awful things here. Number 11, Banana. The big fat quiz of the year. This quiz is a marathon. <laughs> The one and only appearance of Mel B on Big Fat Quiz was marred with Scary Spice's disdain for what was happening. She grew increasingly frustrated throughout the show, with one particularly iconic moment coming when Ayoade took out a banana. Frequently, participants bring food onto the show. Jack Whitehall and James Corden even famously ordered a pizza. So for regular viewers, it wasn't odd to see Ayoade enjoying a healthy snack. I've got peppermint tea and a diet coke. You're out of your I mind, Mel B. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see your ass at the end. I'll see your ass in pieces at the end. I'm gonna be fully tanked up, quipping right till the final adverts. <laughs> but Mel B was baffled by him eating a banana. He went into great detail about his quiz survival strategies and how he was going to pace his banana consumption to keep his energy high. You know you are a little bit weird. <laughs> that has never been said to me before. <laughs> Number 10, Moss Does Countdown, The IT Crowd. I did it, I did it, I've been accepted. No! The marriage of Moss and Countdown is almost as perfect as that of Moss and Ayoade. Bland, dull, and with more than a whiff of OAP, it's the perfect showcase for the unique genius that lurks within. Per maths expert Rachel Riley, Moss hasn't gotten less than an eight-letter word during his countdown run, including the nine-letter word that was staring everyone right in the face, Tenetenba. Um, it actually already is a word, Tenetenba. <laughs> Heavens, really? This, of course, given the logic of the show, leads Moss to be invited to the 8 Plus Gang and the shady, rough and tumble, milk fueled world of Street Countdown. I came here to drink milk and kick ass. And I've just finished my milk. Number 9, Missing Out on Call Me Maybe, the big fat quiz of the year. It was tough being underground, but then there were times, like now, when I'm pleased I was. <laughs> For most of us, 2012 was a whirlwind of Carly Rae Jepsen, Call Me Maybe fever. But for Ayoade, it was different, having spent weeks underground missing the initial infection, and only emerging when the situation had been contained. I have seen the video, and the video is great, because yeah. at the end, the guy's bloody gay. <laughs> and boy, was he smug about it. Basking in the irony of the video's twist ending, Richard's big fat moment is nearly snuffed out when Jack Whitehall butts in with a crass joke. Jack gets a couple of laughs, but Richard flips it, dousing it with logic, and takes the new better joke to its outermost limits. You'd suck a cock to get rid of her. <laughs> Jack, you don't have to suck cocks to get rid of people. <laughs> Number 8, Cold Water Pressure. The big fat quiz of the year. The cynical among us know that rarely is anyone genuinely interested in the answer to how are you. How are you doing, Richard? You all right? I know, I've drifted off a bit, to be honest. <laughs> but, um... In 2010, Jimmy Carr took advantage of a big fat lull to check in on Richard, who opted to give a sincere yet mundane reply. I'll tell you what, um, actually, it's very hard in our place to get the cold water pressure up. Do you know what I mean? In the shower, and that's it's just a nightmare. <laughs> but, and that's fine. Going into great detail about the state of his flat's waterworks, Richard reveals that his shower lacks satisfactory cold water pressure, 
and admits that he's removed the cold water tank and replaced it with a beanbag chair. And we just have to sit and listen. Brilliant. We don't have a tank. I took the tank out. That might be the that might be the problem. <laughs> I took the tank out. Why would you take yeah. the tank out? Because I wanted to put a big beanbag. Number seven, Jimmy's <laughs> mum. The big fat quiz of the odds. When there is no other joke to be made, there's always your mother. <laughs> Richard and Noel, what have you put as your answer to this question? Your mum. <laughs> Was it your mum? It's juvenile, it's played out, and in the right hands, that's why it can still work. Partnered up with fellow indoor kite veteran Noel Fielding, the pair give your mum as the answer to Jimmy's big fat question. Jimmy, they're bullying me, I don't that like it. Mom. It was your mum, though. Rather than acknowledging it as an empty joke, the two commit to it, expand it, and ask every variation on it that they can, and it gets worse and worse. Ending with a bad sex joke about dying. Jeez. <laughs> Did your mum kill him? <laughs> I heard your mum killed him during sex. <laughs> Number six, Blurred Lines, the big fat quiz of the year. When Robin Thicke's inescapable summer hit Blurred Lines crops up as a correct answer in the 2013 big fat quiz, it naturally leads to some banter. Dara O'Brien finds Thick creepy, and Kristen Schaal is at peace with him, despite the grossness of the lyrics. I'm okay with them. I mean, the lyrics are, are a bit date rapey. Richard, meanwhile, plays the devil's advocate and tries to view the song from Thick's perspective. What does no really mean? Is rejection really a reality? That was such an ambiguous word, though. <laughs> Is it possible to not hook up with someone? Richard, within this context, is thoroughly confused, but the rest of us are thoroughly amused. It's very ambiguous when someone says, I don't want you to have sex with me. What do they mean by that? <laughs> like, are they te I just don't know where you stand these days. Number five, <laughs> The Lunar, man to man <laughs> with Dean Lerner. Before Maurice Moss, there was Dean Lerner. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Housing the mannerisms of a British James Cagney, mixed with a bit of 1950s female objectification, the character was given his own faux chat show in 2006. Hosting special guest Formula 5 racing champ Steve Pissing, their conversation about auto racing and car parts distribution reveals some subtle sinister backstory. And when the chat runs its course, it segues into an apprentice-style reality show. You lost are going to be competing against one another to become the new night security guard at my Waking Depot. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Steve handles the heavy lifting, the dull, and the male contestants, while Dean makes off with the sole female contestant who is naturally declared the winner. Does anyone here want a cup of tea? No. Cup of tea? No, they don't. They're fine. Cup of tea? They're fine. Okay. Number four, I'm too busy just staying alive. Goth Marenghi's Dark Place. A real-world sleeper turned cult hit, Dark Place's internal framework presents it as an unaired yet classic bit of British television. They would not make this show today. They would not make it. You know, it was way the hell out there. You know, we were young, we were physically fit, and we were challenging logic. In it, Richard plays Dean Lerner, author Garth Marenghi's book publisher, who, in turn, plays hospital administrator Thornton Reed within the fictional series. Through comically bad acting, weird line delivery, misuse of props, and generally playing the character as a hard-nosed, shotgun-totting boss cop, Iowade shines through the unfathomably bizarre series. Don't drink that! Look, it's bright green! Thank God I only took a tiny sip. There are many gems throughout, but Reed's green screen contribution to Dr. Rick's already ludicrous bike chase is an absolute cracker. Pull over! Don't get that way! Pull over! Number three, no foolishness. Never mind the buzzcocks. Following the departure of Simon Amstel and until the arrival of Rod Gilbert, never mind the buzzcocks adopted a have I got news for you endless cycle of guest hosts. One of those guest hosts was Richard Iwade. Now, before we get started, when I was asked to host the show, I said I would do so on one condition, but when my financial demands weren't met, I mean, not even close, to be honest. Establishing early on he'd only agreed to host the show as long as pop and rock music was treated with respect, 
Richard spends the half hour keeping the energy good and low, avoiding jokes and discouraging the humour and light-heartedness the show is normally known for. You know, like a chuckle. I mean, not now, obviously, it's dead silent. Effectively, Ayoade became the anti-host and it's hilarious. That's why we're watching the show. Why are we watching this show? Number two, trying to put out a fire, the IT crowd. For worldwide audiences, it was the IT crowd and the role of Moss that thrust Richard Ayoade into his portion of the limelight. Oh, four, I mean five, I mean fire. <laughs> Per both the series creator and Ayoade himself, Moss is basically just Richard, but with scripted lines and situations. Now let's see what we have here. Stand upright. Ayoade's general disinterest and reserved wit comes out as Moss's awkwardness and difficulty socializing and interacting with the world around him. So naturally, when the basement dweller is faced with something as primal and analog as a fire, he has no idea whatsoever. <laughs> oh, that is typical. Number one, Richard goes ballistic. The big fat quiz of everything. I was just eating from a tray. Oh, yeah. He's on sugar now. He's just gone crazy. I... All out of bananas, Richard decides to snack on some Maltesers, which, being an orderly sort of fellow, he's organized on a tray. But rather than top off his blood sugar levels, Richard is bullied by Rob Beckett and left candyless. It's like every break time at school, there's always someone like you with my tray of Maltesers. <laughs> Richard manages to be the bigger man, but when Jimmy uses him as a punchline a moment later, the panel feels the long overdue nerd rage of Ayoade. Use me as a premise. Rodeo man over there. These two ancient f <laughs> crow boy. Renaming the Buxton Ross team, Richard sets his sights and tees off on Rob, claiming the younger comic was born 20 minutes ago and was still wet from the womb. You can, Don't! You've you finished all my sweets! <laughs> you know, it was like five years of that! Five long years! Every day I bought a tray of sweets! I like you too! What's your all-time favourite Ayawade show? Let us know in those comments below. I put on the funny voice for the TV all go, go, go. As soon as I get in the motor, I slip it into first. It's like... Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.